Hi, it's Anna here. Welcome back to the channel. Now, the last time I rode the Tiger 900 Rally Pro was during lockdown, so things were a little bit constrained. I couldn't do exactly what I wanted to do. So Triumph gave me the opportunity to get back on this bike and revisit it. And this is what I found second time around. Now, as usual, because I'm revisiting this bike, I'm not gonna go through all of the stats and everything that's on the bike or the equipment. I probably will mention the key ones as I'm riding about, but you can't avoid it. But if you wanna see all of those stats, there's obviously plenty of videos out there that do that. And you can go and have a look at my initial review, which I'll put up in the top corner here. But this is all about what it's like to ride and what it's like to live with. I've had this bike for around about a month and I've ridden it on, town roads and country roads and the motorway so that's going to be the basis for this review so let's start by talking about what it's like around town and that'll give you an opportunity to talk to you about comfort and stuff like that yeah the riding position very comfortable as you'd expect quite upright very comfortable seat quite a lot of uh, nice padding on that I think it's an improvement over the old 800 which I used to own can drop into two heights 860 at its lowest uh, 880 at its tallest very easy to do it's just a couple of clips underneath pop it out and uh, away you go so far I've found that to be pretty good but it gives you a nice upright commanding riding position particularly around town on this particular model that two-piece seat is heated so you have a little button on the top here to switch the uh, rider's seat heating on and there's a button at the back for the pillion to control their own seat but yeah very nice uh, riding position instantly comfortable I do feel I'm, I'm reaching a little bit on the bars I've had the bike for about a month or so and I still haven't quite got used to that easily remedied either roll the bars back a little bit more to bring them a little bit closer to you or have a mess around with the uh, some risers that are adjustable it's not a problem it's just uh, I've noticed it compared to my own KTM 790 and other adventure bikes that I've ridden this reworked 888 cc triple engine uh, I'm not going to go on about the kind of um, uneven firing order and all the technology behind that T-plane crank that's been done to death on on these reviews. Uh, it does make a difference. I've come from, well I say I've come from, I previously owned a Tiger 800 XCA and jumping on this it's, it, it is evident how different it is. There's certainly uh, a little bit more push down low sounds different you've still got that kind of triple whine although it's not as pronounced as the 800 and it's actually got quite a, a rorty exhaust on this it does sound good and obviously people talk a lot about the vibrations with this bike and because they're kind of trying to mimic uh, a twin by changing that firing order you do get some vibrations on it now if you're coming from an 800 or if you're coming from a silky smooth four cylinder onto this you will notice those vibes having said that around town riding here i don't think this is any different to uh, the ducati desert x or the africa twin or the ktm 890 it's the same kind of level really of, of feeling of vibes through the bars that you get with any of those so uh, I think some people have been a bit unfair about that. Certainly at these sort of speeds and around here, I don't find it a problem at all. I actually welcome the, the change in the character of the engine. It's got a really nice uh, soft feel off of the off the bottom. So throttling puts them in road mode at the moment, which is one of six modes. But everything's just nice and silky smooth, very calm, very relaxed. It's a very flexible engine. The bike feels very nimble, very manoeuvrable. It's relatively slim, obviously quite wide bars, 930 I think they are. So we've got some width in those bars. But other than that, the bike does feel slim. Nicely balanced, that's another thing that uh, ups. I don't want to turn this into a comparison to the, to the 800, but as I owned one of those for a few years, I think it's uh, it's obvious I'm going to make some comparisons. This bike feels much less top heavy. 
actually it does feel less unwieldy than the 800 they've done a good job with that obviously there's loads to talk about in terms of the, the kit that's on here and again as I said at the intro I don't want to go through all of that stuff but yeah the rally pro really does put everything on heated grips heated seat center stand fog lamps uh, six riding modes uh, but you get all the bells and whistles on this and you should do really on the basis that it is £14,195 if you choose the white one if you go for the sandstorm which is this you have to add £200 onto that at £14,395 and if you go to the Mac car key that's a further £100 on top at £14,495 it's a, a fair old whack of money but I don't think on this bike you could really want for anything else You've got everything that you need. It doesn't come in as a massive beer moth as a bike. That weight saving that Triumph's done has made a big impact. This is 201 kilos, I think, dry. So by the time you've got oil and fuel and everything on, I know what you're at, about 220, 222, 224, something like that. So in this class, very respectable. So we'll get out of the town now onto some twisties which is where I love to spend a lot of my time and this is where that triple can start to open up. And it is an absolutely glorious engine. That work they've done with the engine does kind of give you the characteristics of a, of a triple, that very flat torque curve. Um, but it has got a little bit more grunt down the bottom. It hasn't got the surge that you'd get from a from a twin quick shift that comes a standard on the rally pro and it is fantastic i've not had a single issue with it it is super slick uh, hats off to to triumph for that one they've done a cracking job with it up and down with an auto blipper As I say, it's fast, it is a quick bike, you've just got a really nice linear power delivery. There's no doubting it is a fantastic engine. The handling is really good, those Brembo brakes are spot on, really nice feel, really strong. The tyre choice are Bridgestones, and uh, I have to admit that I'm not massively a, a big fan of them in the wet. On dry roads they're great, these are pretty good on gravel, on wet I just don't feel like I'm getting uh, enough feedback from them. I've had a couple of little moments on, you know, in, on wet roads, uh, admittedly wet roads and sort of a little bit of mud and road and, and um, sorry, field grime and stuff on them, but uh, they're not my favourite, but they're not horrible by any means. So let's cover off some other bits and pieces with the bike. The TFT screen as you can see, nice big screen. As I said in my original review of this, it's a really clear screen, lots going on, um, you know, very easy to read. I just feel like Triumph have kind of wasted a bit of real estate somewhat with this. You can obviously change the design on this, but you've got this kind of big bar kind of rev counter on each side. Um, I just think they could have made better use of the space. Uh, it's, you know, that's a personal opinion, it's a personal thing. I don't dislike the screen, I think it's good. It doesn't glare in the sunshine. It's very clear, it's great at night, it's not too bright. But, and this bike has the My Triumph connectivity system on it. So you can control your GoPros, you can take calls, you can listen to music, and you can use turn-by-turn -turn navigation using the Triumph app. Now, I will be honest, and I'll have to say that I did struggle with that a little bit. I'm no Luddite, I'm pretty good with tech, and uh, I managed to pair my phone with the bike. That was really easy. Just go into pairing mode, and there's an option here we can go to Bluetooth pairing, and it just did that straight away. Open my Triumph app, planned a route using what three words to the Triumph Visitor Centre. All very good, gave me a few options. I picked one, 
went to start the route and the phone told me that it wasn't connected to the bike but the bike said it was connected so I had a, several attempts at, at getting that fixed I kind of unpaired the device and got rid of all those connections went through that process again connected really easily opened the app phone not connected I think on the fourth attempt of doing that I just gave up and said you know you know what I can't be bothered with this so I can't show you the turn by turn navigation um, because it just peed me off so much that I couldn't get it to work that I didn't bother with it but um, if you're in luck and it works I, it's probably a very good system if you want to use that uh, it's nice to know that uh, that's all included in it but for me it just it just didn't work Here comes a car so I've come down a, you know, a bit more of a bumpy lane now just to give the suspension a, a going over and this show of suspension I think it's been very good it's adjustable you've got preload adjustment you've got damping and compression on separate forks you've got same on the rear hasn't got the advantages obviously of the electronic suspension that the GT Pro has but I have to say the suspension out of the box factory and I'm probably heavier than something that this is set up for it's worked really well for me uh, you've got the remote preload adjuster on the back so if you stick the luggage or the stick a pillion on a couple of clicks of that will take care of that it's nice and sure footed even on sort of bumpy roads like this mid mid corner it's very sure of where it's going it's a very easy bike to ride very confidence inspiring bike it's plush but on a, on a firmer side which I think is good something like the Africa Twin is is plusher but is softer and is noticeably softer I think this gives you a really nice balance between uh, the two so it's not so firm that it's shaking your fillings out and it's too racy but uh, it's very well damped Now some other things that I talked about in the main review is this screen, really nice tall screen, easily adjustable, uh, some manufacturers seem to make that such a pain, um, but this is just grab that, pull it up and down, really simple. I found for me at 5 foot 10 in the middle, gives me no buffeting on the helmet, it's very quiet in that sense, and uh, I still can see easily over the top of it. So I've put it in the middle and kind of left it there and it's been fine. You've got little deflectors here which help to push the wind away. One gripe I suppose there would be was that that screen could potentially be a bit wider. And when we come to the kind of motorway or main road riding a bit later on, it may become a little bit more evident. So I still don't get that buffeting but I get a lot on my shoulders. And it, I, 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 I know that people like to have that kind of Dakar inspired short uh, sort of narrow screen sorry tall narrow screen in the middle we've seen it on a lot of adventure bikes for me on this one it feels like if it was just a couple of inches wider either side then it would make a whole lot of difference as it is it's a good screen i've got no issues with it um certainly in terms of the way it pushes the wind around your head um, but i just you get a lot more here and again for for longer journeys that could get a little bit tiresome again going back to the vibes you don't really notice it through the pegs I'll be honest now, these pegs do have a rubber insert that comes with them now I've been riding this for about a month and I took that rubber insert out after my first ride because I went out in the wet and um, it was incredibly slippery with those rubber bits in but thankfully you can just dip, pull them out and pop them back in as and when you need them so I've got them in today because it's dry as I mentioned in other videos I'm not blessed with a lot in the way of off-road opportunities around here it's mainly green lanes I'm riding at the moment with an ankle injury so I've taken the executive decision to stay out of that because if I get myself into trouble or it starts getting tricky and I've got to kind of dab my feet I don't really want to do that it's painful enough changing gear as it is but we've seen videos and we've got lots of videos from, from other reviewers and from Triumph themselves that this is a very capable machine. If you're a very competent off-road rider, 
you'll have no issues pushing these big bikes around. The bike is far more capable off-road than I am. And that does lead to the question is if, if you're doing predominantly road with a little bit of off-road, do you pick this or do you pick the GT Pro? Now the GT Pro I think is a fantastic bike. I really do love that electronic suspension, that semi-active electronic suspension. But if I'm being honest, this is you know, equally as good a road bike, I think. From a pure aesthetics point of view, I would probably pick this one. I always like to have the option, even if I don't intend to do a lot of off-road riding, I always like to have the, the opportunity to do it. And I think this uh, just gives you that. Well, you'd be able to do that with a little bit more confidence than you would on the GT Pro. Obviously, a lot of it is down to tyres, but the extra ground clearance, extra suspension, travel, and the way the suspension is set up, I think this is, for me, is a really good all-round bike. If, if I was going to go touring, this would be a good choice. But it's horses for courses. Have I got any niggles with the bike? Well, one's really stupid, and that's the fact that it's got a twin headlamp, but it's split. One side is the is the dip beam, the other side is the main beam, so when you're riding along, you've just got one headlight on. That's not a problem, it wouldn't stop me buying the bike, but personally it bugs me. If you've got a twin headlamp, I'd like both of those to be on. But would it stop me buying it? Not at all. And then that smooth feeding of power. 94 horsepower is more than enough. Even two up with luggage, there's still plenty of grunt. The standing position on this bike is very good. The bars are nice and high in this riding position, but as soon as you get up onto your feet, they're, for me, just in the right point. The cutouts in the tank offer a nice place to rest and grip with your knees. Standing, really good standing position on this bike. So, onto the motorway now. And again, everything I've said so far about the bike has rings true on the motorway. It's very stable, the bike tracks really nicely, it's comfortable. The seat eventually, after a couple of hours, I've found it starts to kind of feel the, the plastic base underneath. But once you've been riding for a couple of hours, to be honest, you're, you're going to be wanting to get off to stretch your legs anyway. But that kind of rider triangle, really comfortable, not too much of a bend in the leg. But all in all, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah, very comfortable place. This is where I can notice much more of the wind. Again, the helmet is good, which is the key thing. I think keeping the wind off of there and not creating too much wind noise or too much turbulence does a good job of that, but there's a lot getting around here. So I think just having that, you know, just a couple of inches either side, just a little bit that flares out, um, I think would work well. I'm sure there's aftermarket screens that would do that. Again, it's not really a negative for the bike, but if you're doing a lot of touring, uh, I know riding in the rain, I've noticed that, you know, I, I, this screen doesn't keep me as dry as, as others that I've tried or on other bikes, so that's one thing. I've still got that little bit of vibe from the bars, but no worse than anything else. However, when the speed picks up, so does the vibrations. Now, riding in the UK with a speed limit of 70 miles an hour it's not an issue if you want to ride faster than that if you're on the autobahns or if you're on uh, you know French motorways or European motorways where you've got 130 kilometer per hour limit then things do change a little bit and I've noticed riding at 80 miles an hour to 85 miles an hour then that resonance in the bars does become a little bit more noticeable and unfortunately it became a little bit intrusive for me and if you continue at those speeds for you know an hour half an hour 45 minutes or such I did start to get a tingle in my hands and if I'm being completely honest it did start to annoy me but at those sort of speeds and I'm saying to you that, that that buzz in the bars is much more noticeable. There's no getting away from it. Uh, you know, I've got to be honest, when I ride these bikes and it's easy to say, oh, it's not too bad. But in town and most of the day-to-day -day riding, 
no problem whatsoever. As I say, that there's I've ridden bikes that that nobody talks about that vibration, and it's higher in those bikes than it is in this. Once you get above 80 miles an hour at 85, it does become more noticeable. Whether that will make a difference to you or not, I don't know. For me, it's I don't know, potentially it could be a problem. I'd have to ride it a lot more on motorway miles. And admittedly, when I'm touring, I mean, sometimes you can't avoid it. In my, my recent my most recent European trip, I had to get to Poland in a, in a short space of time, so I had to do a lot of motorway miles. And I think actually this probably would have got on my nerves. Most of the time though, I'm searching for the smaller roads. I don't mind if it takes me twice as long to get somewhere as long as um, I'm having fun. Is that a big drawback for that bike, is, for this bike? Is that the, the straw that breaks the camel's back in using this as an all-round bike? I don't think it is, no. The engine is fantastic as an all-round bike that is going to munch miles on the motorway, do A roads and B roads, it's still a fantastic bike. I would urge you, if you are interested in this, is to go and ride one and give one a good ride don't just you know if you've got most times obviously you only get a chance from a dealership to get out for an hour or so but make sure you get uh, at least 10 or 15 minutes on a motorway or a big a road where you can get up to those national speed limits and and, and see what you think it is a very capable machine it's good fun to ride it's comfortable it's got all the kit on it. Triumph have done a very good job at this. So really it's a bike that's equally at home, pottering and filtering around town. Out on open roads like this, it is just superb. To get that engine singing, really, really nice. Little nadgery sort of country lanes. Again, really easy to control, very uh, neutral. Good at slow speeds. and then out on the motorway. Again, aside from the, the kind of the intrusion of the vibrations from the bars, a very capable machine. So if you want an all around adventure bike that does a bit of everything, I think this does particularly well. You know, if you buy this bike, in terms of accessories, all the stuff you'd ever want to put on it is kind of anything to personalize it uh, or luggage. You don't, there's nothing else that I can think of that you would need on here. It is all in all a very, very good bike. So I think as pretty as much as I can say on the bike, I've talked about it in town, I've talked about it in the country and on the motorway, so I'll hand back to me to wrap up. So there you have it. I think I've covered all of the key points on this and this Tiger 900 Rally Pro is definitely a very well-rounded bike. It does everything particularly well. The, no bike is perfect, there are some issues. Those vibes could annoy some people. As I say, around town and for most of the riding, I didn't see any problem with it. Extended time at higher speeds, it starts to get a little bit intrusive. If you'd like to see more of these reviews, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and that notification bell. And until next time, thanks for watching. Take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.